Hello, thank you for joining us for Building Strong Communities. I'm Erica Manny, the Chief Executive Officer for the American Red Cross Central Appalachia Region. I hope this show will provide you with vital information to help keep you and your loved ones safe and help to build a strong and resilient community. The mission of the American Red Cross is to prevent and alleviate human suffering in the face of emergencies by mobilizing the power of volunteers and the generosity of donors. The Red Cross aspires to turn compassion into action so that all people affected by disaster across the country and around the world receive care, shelter, and hope. Our communities are ready and prepared for disasters. Everyone has access to safe, life-saving blood and blood products. All members of our armed services and their families find support and comfort whenever needed. And in an emergency, there are always trained individuals nearby ready to use their Red Cross skills to save lives. Through this show, we will provide you with critical life-saving information for you, your family, and our communities. After emergencies, the Red Cross helps meet the urgent humanitarian needs of those affected. We focus on providing safe shelter, food, emotional support, first aid, health services, spiritual care, financial assistance, and emergency relief supplies, such as blankets, hygiene items, and cleaning kits. It's become increasingly common for the Red Cross to respond to multiple large-scale disasters simultaneously. Year-round, the Red Cross is ready to respond effectively to disasters of any size. That's why it's so critical for us to have the resources and support to maintain a network of more than 21,000 trained disaster workers and more than 90% of those are volunteers. We also have warehouses nationwide stocked with relief supplies. Before Hurricane Helene made landfall in Florida on September 26th as a Category 4 hurricane, the Red Cross positioned hundreds of Red Cross disaster responders and thousands of relief supplies across the Southeast. The Red Cross opened or supported more than 140 shelters for nearly 9,400 individuals who had evacuated their homes in the 48 hours after Helene made landfall. Helene could be one of the costliest storms in U.S. history. The storm left destruction spanning some 800 miles across 10 states, North Carolina, South Carolina, Georgia, Florida, Tennessee, West Virginia, Virginia, Kentucky, Ohio, and Indiana. Hurricane Helene caused massive destruction across the Southeast, leaving entire communities destroyed. Homes and businesses destroyed, damaged hospitals, schools, power lines, and roadways. In many areas, people had no food, no power, no connectivity, and little fuel to fill their vehicles. Stories of tragedy and destruction are being told again and again by those who've lived through the nightmare. Then some of the same areas were devastated again when Hurricane Milton made landfall along the Florida Gulf Coast on October 8th. That night, 85,000 people sought refuge in evacuation centers and shelters. The American Red Cross is there, helping as people come to grips with their losses and will be there in the months to come. Whether living with the impacts of two deadly hurricanes just days apart in Florida or the utter devastation in the Carolinas, Georgia, Tennessee, and right here in West Virginia, people were in desperate need of help. The Red Cross has been working alongside dozens of partners to provide comfort and relief to those in need. Disasters this large require a team effort, with communities and nonprofits coming together to coordinate relief services, making sure that people have the support that they need. Several disaster kitchens are producing tens of thousands of hot meals a day, and dozens of emergency response vehicles are on the roads, providing meals, water, and supplies to those struggling to clean up their homes. Depending on the damage, different areas have unique needs, and we're working with partners to deliver things like laundry and shower trailers, cooking stoves, even spark plugs to keep generators going, and machinery running to support cleanup. Disaster health volunteers are caring for minor injuries and replacing things like eyeglasses and medications, and mental health volunteers are providing comfort to those affected. Right now, it's important for people to support one another. Events like these can cause a variety of feelings and reactions, and it's okay to feel worried or drained, and children experience traumatic events differently than adults because they can't always talk about their worries, 
it can come out in their behaviors. The Red Cross has disaster mental health workers available to support people. We have received more than 11,500 inquiries as people continue to search for missing loved ones, and our Red Cross reunification teams are working nonstop to help. Our work doesn't end after disaster strikes. After the emergency phase of a response has been completed, we turn to helping people recover and addressing lingering community needs. Working together with community leaders, government, and relief agencies, we organize and execute recovery strategies that include providing emergency financial assistance in the immediate aftermath of a disaster, distributing financial assistance for households that need extra help in the long term, and providing grants for community-based recovery services. This is an immensely difficult time for many across the Southeast as people struggle to comprehend their new reality. Many have lost everything, their homes, their jobs, their vehicles, their belongings. Sadly, some have also lost loved ones or are still searching for those missing. We will take a quick break, and when we return, we'll be joined by Ed Helfenstein, who deployed with the Red Cross days after Hurricane Helene made landfall. Stay tuned for more information about this response. And as floodwaters continue to rise, thousands are left dead. Hundreds of homes have been destroyed by the wildfires. Disasters have left many in need of emergency shelter. You can help those impacted by disasters, big and small. Give now. Welcome back. Joining us today is Ed Helfenstein, who regularly serves as the program director for our regional service to the armed forces and international services programs. And he just returned from a deployment after Hurricane Helene to Georgia as an elected official liaison and executive. Ed, can you tell us when you deployed to respond to Hurricane Helene and what you saw as serious impacts in that area? So I, I left on September the 28th and uh, arrived on the, the ground in Macon, Georgia um, shortly after that, same day, and uh, started working on the, uh, on the disaster relief operation the, next, the following day. And um, so in Georgia, um, if you can imagine Georgia, South Georgia's Valdosta area, and then Northeast Georgia is the um, I can't think of the name of the town, but were they uh, Augusta, Augusta, Georgia? So if you just draw a straight line, basically from Valdosta to Augusta, that was the impacted area, straight across the state of Georgia. And Georgia received high winds, so the majority of the damage was caused by trees trees falling over in the roads, blocking roads, um, power outages, they had difficulty with water, uh, communications, a lot of uh, disruption in everyday life. And what kind of needs did you see the Red Cross filling after a storm and those impacts? So initially um, when a disaster happens, it's difficult to figure out what is going on, right? Sort of the fog of war. So initially we had people out in the communities trying to figure out where the damage was. It was difficult just to get around because many of the roads were blocked by trees. Um, so workers came in and started clearing paths and they would clear one side of the road and then go out to the next group of trees and clear out one side of the road just so um, people could get through. The Red Cross was on the ground uh, assessing damage, trying to find those locations where people were in need. And the biggest need was food and water. The biggest need was food and water and shelter, of course. And so we opened up several shelters and we started feeding um, and as lines of communications opened up. We found additional pockets of locations where there was additional need. And so we did everything we could to fill those gaps 
uh, and those unmet needs. And what was your specific role and, and what kind of work did you do in that role? So uh, as an elected official liaison, I, I was actually the, the deputy chief on the job. So I worked directly with uh, the folks that are in the field and the leadership at the disaster relief operation. So I was sort of that link in between. Uh, we have executive directors in that uh, elected official liaison network and also additional elected official liaisons. And so those folks know their communities and they're out on the ground identifying uh, where those gaps and services are and helping us to locate people that are in need. Uh, so as they would locate those pockets of folks that need food or the people that need shelter, we would identify those locations and try to fill that need the best we could. And uh, I think in the two weeks I was there, we, we uh, the Red Cross fed about 400,000 meals and uh, housed hundreds of folks. So. Uh, a lot of good work being done by the Red Cross. Ed, we're so grateful you were in Georgia. And about how long um, do you deploy when you go to do work like this after a disaster? Uh, the Red Cross expects you to deploy for no less than two weeks. And um, that's what I deployed was two weeks. Um, many leaders uh, will deploy for three weeks. And then sometimes people will extend uh, depending on their availability, but I was away for two weeks. Well, it sounds like you saw a lot of Red Crossers as well as community partners coming together to meet the needs in Georgia. Um, I understand that you may have a specific story to share with our viewers today. Sure. Uh, so I, I was fortunate enough to go out into a community, um, a small rural community of less than 2,000 people, uh, Valda Valdosta, Ge I'm sorry, Uvalda, Georgia. Um, they had identified the day before some uh, pockets of diverse vulnerable populations that had not had any food uh, for at least a week. And uh, of course, you know, I'm sure they had some food, but they hadn't had a real meal uh, for about a week. So they asked me to meet the executive director at a location where uh, we were supposed to meet a retired teacher who knew these communities very, very well. And that's really all I knew. I had uh, 50 shelf stable meals and uh, 10 cases of water to reach out to these communities with. And so when I arrived at the location, um, I was waiting for the executive director to, to show up and I just knew that I was supposed to meet this lady and there was a vehicle that pulled into the driveway and uh, they started to approach me. And uh, so I got out of the vehicle walked towards them to introduce myself. And before I could even introduce myself, um, the, the lady reached out and hugged me. And she was with an older gentleman, um, her father, who was about 84 years old. And she, she hugged me real tight and then she backed away from me. And she looked at me and she put her hand on the Red Cross symbol, the logo on my chest. And she just patted it. And she turned to her father in a very Georgia accent and said, look, Daddy, they're here to help us. So that symbol, that American Red Cross symbol, is a symbol of hope to so many people. Ed, thank you for sharing that. And, um, you know, do you have a message for those who may be interested in being a part of this help? Uh, the message that I would give anyone that might be interested in deploying uh, to help the American Red Cross serve the mission, uh, the humanitarian mission of providing humanitarian relief, disaster relief to those affected by disasters is it is you will get more out of it than you will 
than the people that you're serving. It is so rewarding uh, to be able to help those that are in need. Ed, thank you so much for joining us today and sharing your experience deploying to help those who were impacted in Georgia following Hurricane Helene and hopefully inspiring some of our viewers to become a part of the Red Cross and helping those who need it so desperately right now. Thanks for having me. We'll be back after this quick break. Thank you for joining us for Building Strong Communities. It's not just a donation. It's a warm blanket. It's a bottle of clean water. It's a roof and a bed. Please donate now to help people affected by Hurricane Milton and Hurricane Helene. Welcome back. Joining us now is Jennifer Jet Prescott who is our local disaster workforce engagement manager and plays a critical role after response to hurricanes and large disasters. Jennifer, what is it you do for the American <laughs> Red Cross? That's a loaded question, Erica. <laughs> um, for today's conversation, we'll focus on deployment. Deployment um, is, is, falls under my purview, as well as training, making sure the volunteers um, are prepared to do the role that they've chosen to do when they go out on a disaster relief operation. And then uh, focusing on uh, looking for those assignments, whether they're local, uh, local disasters or nationally, um, talking with the volunteers, getting them prepared for the actual deployment experience, and then getting them out on the road so they can go respond. So you've talked a lot about volunteers. Mm -hmm. Why is the role of volunteering so critical to delivering our humanitarian services mission? You know, 95% of our disaster workforce um, is made up of volunteers. Um, and if it weren't for those folks who were willing to sign up to be a volunteer and utilize their time uh, to do the trainings and be prepared and help us build readiness and then be ready to respond, uh, sometimes with 24 hours notice, we would not be able to deliver the mission of help and hope that the Red Cross has. So when disaster strikes, mm -hmm. the Red Cross is always there. Mm -hmm. How is that possible? Uh, it goes back to readiness and preparedness. Uh, you know, w with our volunteers and with our staff, uh, they all respond locally or nationally, uh, depending on their availability. And, you know, we have trainings that we do to prepare everybody for the roles they're going to do on a disaster relief operation. Um, sometimes we do sheltering exercises so that we have that practice, so that when we have to open an actual shelter, we're prepared for that. Uh, so, you know, it's, it's, a lot of, uh, it's a lot of preparedness that pays off for our clients and pays off for our volunteers and our staff who deploy because they feel more confident in being able to deliver that mission. So to what kind of disasters do you oh deploy <laughs> Red Cross volunteers and team members? You know, we, were, we send volunteers out to both uh, weather-based disasters and man-made disasters. We have sent folks out for uh, supporting communities after train derailments. We yeah, I think in 2018, we sent folks to Hawaii for volcano eruption. Right now, we're dealing with hurricanes, um, tornadoes, flooding, flash flooding. Honestly, the sky is the limit, which is why it's so important that we have those volunteers um, and that they're prepared. They've done their training and they're ready to go. And are there local opportunities in addition to Absolutely. those large events? Absolutely. So we have disasters nationally, you know, but we also have local disasters. Right now we have a disaster, um, a disaster relief operation going on in southern West Virginia. So those volunteers have been responding. They've been doing the feeding and the other activities in southern West Virginia. In addition to disaster operations, we also have a disaster action team that responds to house fires. Um, we do preparedness activities like Prepare with Pedro, where we we go into elementary schools and we teach children about disaster um, so that they are prepared and maybe take some of that fear away when something bad happens. Um, let's see, we have prepared, uh, and sound the alarm. How could I forget sound the alarm? Right now we are in the middle of the sound the alarm campaign, our annual campaign to go into homes and install smoke alarms, educate people about fire safety, and help them come up with uh, a plan for escape if there is a fire in their home. So the, there's definitely different, different ways people can get involved in disaster. Well, I think that it's important for people to know that, you know, they can be involved right here at home mm -hmm. or deploying to sure. these large disasters, which of course right now we've had a number of people yes, deploy. In mm -hmm. fact, about how many 
folks have you deployed already <laughs> to these largely impacted areas of Helene mm -hmm. and Milton? Sure. So um, this is exciting for me. Um, we have had 80 folks from Central Appalachia respond for um, Hurricane Helene and Hurricane Milton. In my five years here, we've maybe max had 28 to 30 out at a time. Um, and we have been going between 45, 50 at a time out. But in total, we have had 65 folks from Central Appalachia respond to any of the operations for Hurricane Helene, whether that was Georgia, North Carolina, South Carolina, Tennessee, or Florida. Um, and then for Hurricane Milton, we have had 15 so far. Which, which is fantastic. And we've had new volunteers come in who signed up, did trainings, and within a couple of days we got them assigned and got them out so that they could go help, which is just phenomenal. That is, and yeah. if people are watching now and wondering <laughs> what they can do if they've been moved mm -hmm. to help support those who have been impacted by Helene, mm -hmm. Milton, or even here locally when house fires or other disasters mm -hmm. happen, sure. what would you tell them? Um, I would say go to redcross.org or call 1-800-RED-CROSS, sign up to be a volunteer. Uh, they're going to put you in touch with a disaster program manager or disaster program specialist in disaster cycle services. Um, if you're interested in deployment, you're probably going to end up with me, so we can talk about national deployment. Um, but regardless of what your talents and skills are and what your availability of time is, there is a role for everyone at the Red Cross in Central Appalachia region. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you mentioned the roles <laughs> on a deployment to mm -hmm. a large-scale disaster. Mm -hmm. What are some of those roles that people might be able to fill? So I was thinking about this earlier today, um, you know, and, and we call our department disaster cycle services. And I didn't really understand that until I went on my first deployment to Kentucky a couple of years ago because our response is cyclical. You know, we work on preparedness. When something happens, we have immediate response, and then we move into recovery. So uh, with the hurricanes, with Hurricane Helene and Milton, you know, our initial response was to get on the ground. We had folks who went pre-landfall, so we could go ahead and set up shelters, evacuation shelters for folks so people would have a safe place to go, um, especially, you know, with rising water or damage to their homes. So one of the very first things we do is we, we take care of those immediate needs of shelter and feeding. A distribution of emergency supply could be handing out, you know, shampoo and soap because they've lost everything. Um, it could be going into communities and handing out flats of water, bleach, tarps, uh, materials that um, if they are able to clean up their home to continue staying in their home, they have these materials that they can use. Uh, once we get over that immediate response and make sure that people have somewhere safe to stay and they have food, um, then we work on damage assessment where we're going out in the communities and we're looking at the damages to the homes, which allows us to move into recovery. Casework recovery is where we can work with the clients one-on-one -on -one to find out what their needs are and figure out what resources we can provide to help them get to the next chapter or what we call the new normal. You know, when these storms happen, we can't undo that, but we can be on the ground to be there to hold their hand and walk them through and get them to a new chapter. That is such mm -hmm. impactful work that sure. people can be doing to help mm -hmm. after disasters. Mm -hmm. Do they have to have certain experience before they come to the Red Cross? You know, no. <laughs> the short answer is no. Um, if you want to deploy, if you want to respond to disasters, you do need to have a current valid driver's license. Um, if you're wanting to deploy nationally, you do have to have 14 days of availability. You need to be okay with flying because generally if we're sending you somewhere you're going to fly, you need to be okay with staying in a staff shelter. And by staff shelter, I mean a congregate staff shelter would be like a gymnasium with 40 to 50 cots um, and you would be housed there with other Red Cross volunteers. Um, so you have to be okay with that. Um, right now, if you have a CPAP or other medical equipment or you have medication that has to be refrigerated, we can't send anyone out like that right now because there has been so much power outage and we can't guarantee that there would be electricity to cover those needs. But I don't want people to be discouraged about that. Um, that is typical for a disaster response first wave, the first couple of weeks, like right after the storm. Once things start stabilizing, we will be able to get those folks on the ground so that they can work with the clients and provide those services. Well, you've mentioned it. The Red mm -hmm. Cross is there immediately and mm -hmm. for weeks mm -hmm. and months for, right. you know, 
the response as well as recovery. Mm -hmm. So we have a lot of opportunities mm -hmm. um, for volunteers. How quickly can we get them um, out to the disaster? How long is training? That type of thing. Uh, you know, we have had a few people who came in as new volunteers last week and within a couple of days we were able to get them out because we had need, we had positions that needed to be filled on these disaster relief operations. Um, once we get them in and they've completed their background check, I, I had a lady once who did her training in 24 hours and we were able to get her out. So depending on, you know, getting getting in the system, you know, going to redcross.org or calling 1-800-RED-CROSS, signing up, getting your background check done, um, and then getting through the trainings that need to, to be done. So you know how the Red Cross, for instance, operates a shelter or how we do feeding, you know, um, and paying attention to how we spend our donor dollars. Having that information is really important before you hit the ground. Um, but we can we can do it very quickly if someone has the need and we have positions open that we can we can fill with them. Great. And what mm -hmm. are some of the benefits of deploying? <sighs> You know, I will tell you that my first deployment to Kentucky two years ago, it was the hardest thing I've ever done. It was the best thing that I have ever done. I got to meet people from all around the country. I even got to meet volunteers from Central Appalachia region that I had worked with for two years and had never met face to face. Um, you know, Mr. Rogers used to tell kids, um, when something bad happens, look for the helpers. And we get to be the helpers on the ground. We get to go and have a tangible impact um, on people who are suffering. And I think anybody who signs up to be a Red Crosser, you know, in their heart, that's what they want. They want to be able to help. They want to be able to provide hope. They want to be face to face with the clients um, and make a difference. And we get to do that. Jennifer, thank you so much. We're so lucky to have your expertise and all the ways that you support our volunteers and team members um, to make sure that they can help when people need it most. All right, thanks, Erica. And people need support now. We can't do it alone. Please help by making a financial donation, an appointment to give blood, or signing up to become a volunteer by visiting redcross.org or calling 1-800-RED-CROSS. Financial donations are the quickest and best way to help those who need it most by empowering the Red Cross to provide shelter, meals, relief supplies, emotional support, recovery planning, and other assistance during these disasters. Thanks to the generosity of blood donors in unimpacted areas of the country, the Red Cross can ensure life-saving blood products are available to patients ahead of these storms. Those outside of the affected areas are encouraged to continue giving blood and platelets now. Hurricane season isn't over. If you want to make a difference in the lives of others, consider putting on a Red Cross vest and joining us. Just like the people served by the Red Cross, we're proud of our volunteers and they represent a wide array of cultures, backgrounds, ages, gender identities, lifestyles, and beliefs. Everyone is welcome and we are looking for volunteers who are willing to travel this fall to support emergency shelters for major national disaster relief efforts. Shelter volunteers work directly with residents to ensure their basic needs are met and help them access additional services. All candidates must complete necessary training and be able to commit to a two-week deployment. If you have a strong desire to help others and the ability to thrive in a fast-paced, dynamic environment, please apply and be ready to respond when the next major disaster strikes. Thank you so much for joining us today. To learn how you can help, call us locally at 1-844-216-8286 or visit redcross.org slash C-A-R you can also follow us on social media at Red Cross C-A-R. Thank you again for joining us today.